Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.O. Combs Asian Art, located here in Gloucester, Mass. Today is Friday, January, no, July, not January, July 14th, 2017. And uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, last week's auction results from the uh, newsletter catalog. And uh, before we do that, though, I want to talk about something that we did a blog on yesterday, and I'm going to go through it a little bit with you. It's, it's, it's sort of caught fire on uh, some Facebook accounts and has gotten a lot of traffic. A few days ago, a few weeks ago, actually, some folks started posting images of vases and jars that were coming up in a, in a sort of a mystery auction somewhere. Um, moon flasks and chin lung uh, uh, this and coral ground that bowls and everything. And, and we decided to take a look at it because it all seemed a little too good to be true. And the auction is being conducted down in Marietta, Georgia by the Eden Galleries. I don't know them, and I don't know how much they know about Chinese art, but if they're selling these porcelains, they don't know much. Um, and all of them are fakes, uh, from what I can tell. Um, I don't know whether the consigners are lying to them or what is going on down there, but uh, these things are turning up everywhere. With you know, We went and looked yesterday, spent some time out looking at them, <clears throat> and we saw pieces like these, this giant pair of um, uh, Chin Lung type faceted vases uh, with estimates you know, in the low thousands. And uh, obviously, these are uh, uh, brand new, um, not even slightly old. Um, here's a real one that sold a couple of years ago at Sotheby's. It brought 17 million Hong Kong, uh, which is, you know, two or three million U.S. Um, and then we took a look at some other other things, the pair of coral ground bowls they're offering that is supposed to be uh, Yongshen period, uh, you know, with an estimate of, you know, you know, in the low thousands also. Well, here's a real one. It brought almost a million dollars a couple of years ago. At, uh, I don't know whether this was Christie's or Sotheby's, but one of their auctions. That's a real one. And if you go over and look at the ones they're offering, obviously they're quite different. And they have a moon flask. Cause moon fl these moon flasks are turning up everywhere. I saw one in a house and, uh, not far from here recently that was a, a, a reproduction, and a, and a better reproduction than this one. And uh, at any rate, uh, here's a real one. Okay, the last, this one sold in 2011, it brought 2.6 million. Um, the one in, down at Marietta is estimated, again, in the low thousands because it is modern, but it's being, it's being advertised as a period one. This is the problem. If you want to sell reproductions, sell them as reproductions. But I, I don't know what, how they came up with these, but the, this gallery has, seems to have a, a history uh, of this kind of stuff from what we could see from their past sales. And they are making copies of these um, transitional vases, jars. This is one of them, okay? This is an absolute reproduction. Um, it's uh, sort of roughly the same shape. Oh, excuse the interruption. Uh, uh, as I've mentioned before, we have a firehouse a couple blocks from us, and they always seem to go out around the time I'm doing these videos down to the harbor. Uh, they're active down there. All right, so we have this transitional vase that's a copy. Yes, they're making copies of them, so be mindful of that. But in general, regarding this, uh, this auction, um, I have some real issues with the stuff that's in here. It's my opinion. If you don't agree with me, go bid and knock yourself out. But um, I don't want to hear about it later. I don't want to get emails from folks uh, complaining. The, we did this on the feet just because the bottoms of every one of these is exactly why it's wrong. Okay, These are, f these are the feet of fakes. Okay. And I, I hope the auction house maybe will go and give their consigners a bit of a lecture. All right. Now on to the newsletter. Um, it was it was some interesting things last week. We had also um, the Carlos Santi's uh, little blurb in here about his auction that he's scheduling for late September. If you want to consign and uh, get it done, and uh, there were all of these, and it was a pretty interesting week. So let's start get started on it. First, we had these. I like these a lot. These were not enormous. These were about nine inches tall, but a very attractive pair of uh, uh, lacquered pewter. Uh, nice handcraft from China. Got, these were sort of popular in the 19th century. They began working with a lot of pewter in the Swato area now, and other workshops, other places. But this was an elephant and a foo lion with these uh, tables with the vases on top is serving as candlestick holders. These nice sort of cage worked bottoms that you often see on uh, seated Buddha figures. And uh, they took the form forward and put elephants on them. And I liked it a lot. And uh, here's an idea how big they were. But very pretty, very interesting. And uh, I think they went really reasonably, $323 for the pair. Uh, I think that was a good buy. Uh, York Antiques had them, or York Ant. He's up in Portland, Maine. He, probably got him out of a good estate up there. He's a good local picker. 
they do a good job. And uh, then on to this, uh, another piece of pewter. Uh, I've always liked Chinese pewter, even way back when it wasn't worth anything. I always thought, thought it was interesting because you know, there was a lot of good hand crafting going on. They'd make these in blanks and then turn them over to an artist. <clears throat> and this is a nice 19th century one. It's beautifully done, has brass handles on the ends. It's a big tea caddy box. And I love the horses. All of you know I like horses, and this was a, a, a nice example of it. And um, there's an end view of it, the hinge right here. And uh, this is a good box, a nice solid antique, 19th century. And uh, went for $428. Uh, and I think that was a very reasonable trade. Um, here's the interior. You can see that it's fitted, you know, to hold two types of teas and then close it up. Tea was a really expensive commodity, so they used to keep, often keep it under lock and key. And then there was this big vase. This was a two-foot vase with a sort of unusual coloring, this sort of sherbet ice cream ground on it. Uh, but nice quality decoration, late 19th, maybe early 20th century, very hard to discern in that narrow time period because things didn't change a heck of a lot. But well done. And this, I like this Ver deco Femi Ver decoration um, and so forth. And this vase did pretty well. It brought $2,328, but it was a two-foot vase. Size matters on these. Okay, the bigger they get, the, the price jumps up on them. If it was a pair, it probably would have brought five or 6000 this was another pretty good buy, I think, for the week. If, if, you like, if you're a Chinese fan collector, uh, this one was nicely done. And I, I, what I liked about it was, was that it, was, it wasn't quite as crowded as a lot of fans. Here's the beginning of it. There's the middle of it. There's women in court scenes and so forth with pine trees and, you know, uh, uh, spring blossoms coming up over here. So, so to give you a hint to the time of year it was. And uh, again, over here with these, uh, these two sort of maidens standing on a... Uh, 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 an outcropping in a pond uh, near a house. Very attractive. And the back of it was, again, typical what you see, uh, a little simpler with uh, blossoming flowers across it and birds. And it went very reasonably, including in the original lacquer case. It only went for $310. This is a, uh, this is a, a, a seller over in Madrid, Spain we follow, and she gets uh, some very nice things. She has a good eye, and I think this was a terrific purchase. All right. And then there was this pair of boxes. I like these. I like the color. I like the sensibility, the sort of the way they're drawn very elegantly and very delicately uh, carved on the lid. That's very difficult carving to do. And with these Xiao characters on top, nicely done all the way around. There's a detail of it. And they appear to have some sort of maybe a light lacquer coating on them. Hard to tell. And here's a side of it. Here you can see the grain, but the top looks a little different. And uh, I love the way it was done with these sort of rococo leaves. Uh, very typical of 18th and early 19th century boxes. I suspect that's when these were made. And uh, they went reasonably. I think this was a, also a perfectly great buy. $305 for the pair. All right. Maybe it's because it's summer. Uh, uh, things have slowed down a little. And we featured these, uh, these uh, Yamanaka, this Yamanaka silver uh, and uh, jade uh, cigarette holder. Um, they, 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 Yamanaka used to get jade pieces uh, before they were shut down by the federal government in, 19, in the 1940s after the bombing of Pearl Harbor. It was a Japanese-owned company, so they got kicked out of the country. But they were fabulous dealers. They had great things. There's the famous liquidation catalog conducted by the government uh, when they seized the company. But uh, they would take nice like objects like this beautiful piece of uh, greenish uh, uh, jade and turn them into objects. This one had a monkey on it, and they took a bi disc, B disc, and put it on top, and then used silver mounts, turned it into a cigarette holder. And they also took an ivory bead and stuck it on there. All right. And this was probably one of the bargains of the week. If you, if you like early wares, Chan Chi and late Ming wares, this was a set of uh, uh, seven dishes. And uh, some of them with these wonderful scenes on this, 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 this the, uh, the bird on, uh, next to the pine tree. He had, he had one of those, and then the man on the boat. This, one, this pattern has been repeated many, many times, a famous pattern. Here are the backs of them all. And uh, the whole lot went for $832 for seven of these nice late Ming pieces. I think, I think this may have been the best buy of the week by far really, uh, from a monetary standpoint, somebody got a heck of a deal. Um, you could, I, I think you could probably keep the two or three you really want and sell the rest back as singles and probably come out just about, uh, you come out, I think you'd come out ahead on it. All right, and then there was this nice, this rather nice Kangxi uh, bowl. It's a provincial bowl, 
Um, when, they, when you see them with this sort of general shape and this very loose decoration, the painting on it, done like this, very quickly drawn, you can see, you can see the speed with which the artist painted this. Very typical bottom, very classic uh, Kung Shi foot on it with this sort of nonsensical square seal that uh, nobody can really read. Uh, the, vase, the bowl did have a, a hairline in it, and a tiny chip here. Uh, probably had some other edge roughness, but a nice looking, uh, nice looking type, if you like provincial bowls of the Kung Shi period. And uh, it went very reasonably, $159 for a great looking bowl and a very unusual pattern. Um, this huge exploding flower, I think is just fascinating and, and not something you see very often. So that was, a, that was a good thing for, you know, a collector with a sort of a keen eye and doesn't worry too much about condition. And then there was this. This was this coral red Famille Rose Bowl. Uh, this was a huge bowl. It was 15 inches in diameter and a beautiful coral ground uh, on it. And, and the gilding uh, on it, the decoration of the gilding around the Famille Rose panels was really quite excellent and in very good condition. Look at that. There's no wear. Often you see these and half the gilding is worn off. There is some orange peel on this, so it's probably an early 19th century bowl made around eight, in the 1820s or 30s, somewhere in there. But really good quality all the way around. But the obvious problem was this was the, uh, this giant crack running through the middle and uh, the zipper up the back and around the sides. This thing had been, this bowl had been broken, it appears, very cleanly in half um, and uh, very delicately and uh, neatly stapled right back together uh, for obvious reasons. This is a beautiful bowl and if you like things with old repairs and not, aren't a condition freak, uh, you get yourself a pretty good buy for $1,275 for a 15 inch bowl from this period you do not see them often in this size. Um, you look around and you won't find 15 inch uh, bowls like this very often, hardly ever. Uh, most of them max out at around nine inches, okay? You might find some lasagne shaped bowls, but, but not round. And uh, then there was this rather nice uh, sort of gauze ground uh, Chinese silks, it was a summer robe, um, nicely done, um, with a good gilt thread uh, work all the way around it. And uh, so a little bit of wear, not bad. Went for $1,905, which I think was a pretty good buy. And uh, then we move over to this. This was that, that uh, interesting hat finial that was made out of coral beads and then all strung together like in a fishnet and then wrapped over the top of it. Very unusual. Uh, you can see the threads running all through it and so forth. Here's a view of the bottom. All right, but it's a nice, nice and very unusual hat finial. I, th I thought this was really lovely and good color in the, in the coral. And it brought $1,133, which is a good price for one of these. But, but if you collect uh, clothing and accoutrements uh, of, of, uh, uh, from China, this would be a wonderful addition. All right. And then we had this Kung Shi, this very unusual high-footed uh, uh, tea or wine pot. Um, with with uh, vases and jars, and you, you see the peacock feathers coming out of the top of the of the uh, of the bronze form uh, porcelain here, and uh, there's the bottom of it with the uh, apocryphal Ming mark. All right, and uh, he said it was Kung Shi. It might be it might be a little later than that, but not much. <coughs> Could be Chen Lung, early Chen Lung or something. But it looks it looks okay, and uh, it was a nice nice looking pot. It brought six hundred and fifty nine dollars. Uh, Grand Pip had this. Uh, he gets good things. He's a good picker. All right. And uh, moving along to this. This was that big that big charger. I hope you looked at this. This is clearly a, a late 19th century charger, early 20th century. Um, as, as I've said many times, when you see these uh, birds and they start doing blackbirds of any type, uh, typically you should always think towards late 19th, early 20th century in most cases. And uh, here you have these black uh, peacocks or f black pheasants. And beautifully done, uh, Famille Rose enamel, though. Um, uh, very well done. Uh, here's a close-up of it. The shading on this was really good. You see some orange peel on the surface. The back has the typical back you would see of a late 19th or early 20th century plate. Uh, it was not perfect, though. It had a big chip out of it. If you look up here, about the size of your thumb up against the shirt. But this was a big charger and uh, done very much in the 18th century style with all the openness and no border. And uh, it went for $750, which isn't a bad price for that. Uh, somebody will get that fixed up just fine. 
All right. And then there was this rather really nice Kang Shi uh, figure, uh, figural uh, charger with these radiating panels, sort of reminiscent of Wan Li pieces, but much tidier, obviously, for, uh, for, for the Kang Shi period. And there's some uh, young people standing around a, uh, a table with um, a blossoming plant on it, and then, then peony blossoms coming down from above and so forth. An interesting, rather interesting scene. Here's the back of it. Uh, again, Kang Shi, but with a Ming mark, uh, as you often see. There it is. And uh, there's the foot rim. That's exactly the foot you want to see on these big Kang Shi plates. And uh, this did pretty well. It brought $740. It wasn't an enormous piece. I think it was around nine or so inches in diameter. And uh, it has an old restoration on one of the borders, but nothing too bad. And uh, it did fine. It did very well. All right, and then there was this uh, very pretty Kesey panel. This seller a few weeks ago had a pair that were similar to this. I think he ended up, he probably had three of them. He sold two as a pair and then sold a single. Uh, why he would do that, I don't know. I would sell all three together. But at any rate, this was it. A nice looking Kesey panel um, with uh, good quality. It's a 19th century one. It's not a terribly old one, but very good quality. Always buy quality. Um, and, and there it is. There's a detail work. It's in beautiful shape. And it's got gilt thread ground. This is all gilt thread down in here. And uh, it, did, it did fine. It brought $1,048. And as I recall, the pair that he had brought a little over that, maybe 2200 or something, somewhere in that range. So uh, maybe, the, maybe the buyer of the other two bought this one, too, to get the complete set. And this is something we don't normally put in, but I thought it was very attractive. Um, this was on the Yamamoto um, company in Hong Kong. It's a tortoise shell uh, dresser set. Very elegant. And what was fun about it was it was complete. It had all the brushes and mirrors and so forth, and uh, was beautifully done all the way around. And uh, we'll, uh, let's see, it, how did it do? It, uh, it did okay, but it only brought $378. And I think this was a, a very good buy for somebody who's into, into desk sets and accessories. This, this is all uh, top quality stuff. Take a look at the top of that. This tortoise shell was all done over with gilded uh, gilt work and dragons and so forth. Really nice work. Here's the bottom of it. There's the box. And to get the complete set with the box is, is quite unusual. And I think that was a very, very smart buy. All right. And then there was this. This is rather nice. Typical uh, 1770s or 80s Chinese export. This was a stock pattern, as you all know. <clears throat> You'd see it on punch bowls, tea sets, plates, you know, you name it terrines and uh, but nice one they had lost a lot of its guilt on the handle and the spout um, uh, if you if, if people cleaned their porcelain with ammonia years ago it used to strip the, the gilding right off and at uh, any rate it went very reasonably 281 dollars for a nice antique uh, 18th century teapot nobody can complain about that and then this uh, robe this is an informal robe a summer robe with a, with a dragon on it, maybe for a servant or something and uh, very nice though in, in black silk and went for um, $1,805. All right. And uh, the last thing we're going to look at was the little candlestick. This was that uh, Chinese export uh, candlestick that was uh, had the repair to the top. I'm trying to think where the repair, there it is. It had been broken. You see a really sort of sloppy glue job here, but that could be mended rather nicely, I suspect. But this is a rare form. Okay, Chinese export silver done in, in uh, Chinese export porcelain candlesticks done in Chinese silver forms are very desirable among collectors, and this was one of them, and uh, it did pretty well. It brought seven hundred thirty-seven dollars despite being broken. All right, so that was it for the week. Uh, we're going to work on the uh, newsletter. Uh, give us a thumbs up here if you if you're enjoying these, and uh, subscribe if you're not, and uh, subscribe to the Bit Amount Weekly Newsletter. If you, if you want to see what we've picked out for the week from uh, eBay, objects that we like, and uh, you'll get it uh, every week. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone, and uh, take care. Bye-bye.